Well, honestly, I've come to terms where I don't think that as things stand right now, I don't think that she's able to get to a place where my values and, and boundaries are. So all these things that I've realized what I want in life, what I want out of a partner. I don't think right now she's capable of being that or coming to meet me there without doing a lot of work on herself. I've realized a lot of the stuff that has come up has been her inability to take responsibility for her actions and her own things in her life and owning up to her own shit. And I'm not going to be the martyr for her shit, you know, and, and, and I don't know. I just feel like I, I need to stand my ground a bit. Yeah, absolutely. It's the one thing I love about you is almost every <laughs> sentence that you say is a whole topic, like expecting, <laughs> like expecting her to take responsibility. So yeah. a woman in relationship is mo usually, I, I'm assuming your woman is, has a feminine essence. Yeah. Like she wants to be the one that's more led. She wants to pour herself into you. She dances in the field. She spins around. She's more of a feminine, has a feminine sexual essence. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So asking your woman to take responsibility for herself is asking her to be more like a man. But there's certain things that I feel like she just needs to like grow up. She just acts like a petulant teenager. Is, or is, that, is that what women, I mean, you know what I mean? There's, there's like a lack of an adult responsibility component to the way she acts and does things. And I'm like, well, is that, or am I just reading this wrong? Do women not get to that place? I don't know. I mean, so this is okay. Again, I, this is great. <laughs> this is really, this is really good. So let me draw you something else. Okay. I call this the watermark of anxiety. Yeah. And this is similar to the, the pie that I drew in, in, in that safety and connection, but this is more of your intimate relationship, right? Like okay. if I zoom, if I zoomed into this red, this red piece of the pie, okay, this is the watermark of anxiety. And so if you're, I'll, I'll draw a heart up here. If you're above the watermark of anxiety, she feels more connected, want to follow you, want to be on the adventure with you, more soft, more open. Okay. Like if, if she feels, feels the relationship is going well and there's attraction. Okay. If she feels like things aren't going well, her emotions are going to be expressive, more like a petulant child to your words. They're going to feel more like, you know, giving you shit and being angry and furious and changing the stories from the past. Okay. Right. So to answer your question, it's certainly within. So yes, feminine emotions are going to have all range of emotions, including, including what yeah, no, I mean, I your get masculinity that. I... sees as childish. Yeah, no, I mean, I get that there's that range of emotion and all that. And I understand that. But like, I just feel like there should be just a baseline maturity level to an adult, you know, even if it's even if it's this wavering feminine, you know, that's so uh, that's so nice of you to think that that should happen. That's really <laughs> nice. That's right. You know, what else would be really nice is like, if the world was fair, and children never were hurt. And let's see what else. Everyone had enough food to eat in the world and war and war never happened. Um, yeah. And I could fly. Oh, and as a kid, I had a dream. I was Aquaman and I could breathe underwater. Like that would be great. That'd be really cool. <laughs> All right. All right. So let, let, let me readjust some thoughts here. Okay. <laughs> so the, the, the role of the man, I guess I'm just, you know, again, without having the best role model growing up myself and now, you know, floating around in the darkness until I'm finding this men's group. How does that look? How does that look? As, you know, being the emotional kind of uh, rock and, and all these things. And yes, we can experience emotions, but we process them. We bring it to the men. We don't dump a bunch of shit on her. Uh, but I, I, you know, I guess I'm still not a hundred percent clear on what you say, lead, you know, lead the feminine. Great. And I get components of that. And now I'm learning that there's much more, to that what what am i missing and what what else can we focus yeah that's that's a really good question so i'll, I'll answer this and then we'll take a step forward so i just i also want to say sure. i'm only speaking about women in their intimate relationship as far as feminine and emotional and yeah okay kate more chaotic and more expressive they can be very masculine in business which is most often required you know they can be leaders they can be strong for their family all those things but if a woman who has a feminine essence, sexual essence, which most women do, right, in their intimate relationship, don't want to be the masculine energy one, they want to be the one that's more expressive and has more emotional range. So that's what I'm speaking about. So to your point, so I mean, what I do in my one on one coaching and what I do in the kingly life path that I teach is how to go from being completely underwater to taking steps 
so that you're above the watermark of anxiety within your relationship, okay? Within the relation between the two of you. And once you're above water, then she starts to have desire for you. Then she starts to have the want to follow you, the want to be interested in you. That doesn't mean it's all peachy, okay? But if she yeah. doesn't have, want anything to do with you, if you've yeah. gotten so far underwater that she, you know, like wants out or is yeah. talking, you, you know. That, yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah. Okay, so, so she, she doesn't, then there, you cannot lead her from this place. You can, you can be, you know, just like anyone, you're going to be around them and what you model in the world and your values in the world are going to rub off on people around you. That's absolutely true. But to directly lead a woman in an intimate relationship when she's so far underwater and then now backed off of the bridge of version 1.0, she's not getting back on version 1.0 again. So yeah. the only way to, to nor do I want us to be. I don't okay, want good. Our yeah, good, good. Point. Yeah, to answer your question in a general way, you have to become interesting and attractive enough within yourself for her to want to be, to, for her to want to follow you, for her to want to come closer to you. So the answer starts gotcha. with within you, and you know, to be just real frank with you, thinking of her as a petulant child. Yeah. Like if I thought, if I hung up this call and I was like, it's a fucking dick. <laughs> like, you know, how's, and then next time we were on a call, if I just had that, like, oh, there's a dick. How would you feel? You wouldn't yeah, feel very no. good about that, right? You'd be like, Jeff's a fucking asshole. I'm, I'm, <laughs> right? I'm trying to be, not, I'm trying to be in a place of less judgment right now. So yeah, I'm not, I mean, I'm and I don't, mean, I don't think not, you're a dick. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> no, but you get the point though. So the, the start, yeah. you're, you're doing the work on yourself. I love it. And yeah. if you and I were doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, or if you were in kingly life path and we had more time to dig into the depth of this and for me to teach you more specifics, the very first thing is you're not holding her in high regard. Maybe sometime you are. Yeah, you're right. It's not a hundred percent of the time. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't gotten to that place yet. I'm a work in progress with the high regard thing has been really challenging for me. Sure. Totally. Uh, I just get caught in this like mental game and I'm really working on trying to have high regard, even when she's vicious venom at me, you know, and Siberian tundra coldness, you know, that those are the, that's where I'm really challenged to keep the high regard, you know, like, uh, cause you know, you have these innate reactions. I just want to be like, ah, fuck off. You know, why are you treating me like this? I, I just want kindness in my life. I just want to be, you know what I mean? just basic kindness and when when it, there's like a lack of that on a daily basis all the time even if it's just her going through her own shit um that's where that's where I, that's what i'm working on the high regard sure those totally moments. and i understand and i'm in your corner yeah. absolutely and i yeah. want kindness in my life and i want great connection yeah. and relationship too you know that makes yeah. sense that makes sense and, and it's your it is your possible existential, that... your existential challenge yeah. right now you know, your, your tantric challenge, your spiritual challenge, your karmic challenge right now is you, whether you, we all like it or not. Okay. We've cultivated the situation that we're in, in ways that yeah. we were unconscious around in ways that we were, you know, pressured by culture that we weren't even aware of. We didn't know how to yeah. be, we didn't know how to be the cool, calm, collected, confident man. Right. Okay, cool. So now it's life on hard mode for a while so that we learn that we learn these skills. And right. So let me get like one tip I would suggest if you can visualize this. Uh, I don't I can't think of a superhero right now that gets stronger from negativity, like maybe Deadpool or something. <laughs> Right. He's like, there, yeah. I'm sure there's some villain. There's some villain out there that has that for sure. Sure. There's but a, I mean, I'm trying to yeah. think of a good guy. Right. So uh, some, some good guy, or I could say Popeye. And when she gives you the venom and they're like, Rah! that's the, yeah. that's your spinach. That's your, yeah. that's your spinach to your, to your Popeye. It's like, it's perfect. Cause I'm vegan. That works out great. Hey, there we go. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's this, like, if you can literally, okay. It takes about 10 or 20 seconds for the cortisol to rush out of your frontal lobe you know, right fight or flight and so. that's it you just hit the nail on the head you get that yeah. rush of like what the yeah. fuck and it's it's learning to manage that i think even just on a physiological level yeah you know and and breathe through that or whatever or walk out of the room for a minute and be like settle 
And then, we, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like there's certain modalities to use when you have that innate cortisol rush. And then, you know, I'm just, just what I'm learning that right now. I'm like, trying yeah, to figure good. All that so try, out. try this, try what I'm about to say, and then report back to us, right? Either yeah. one, you can kind of hold up your hand for a second and say, let me think about that for one second. Let me think about that for a minute. And you turn your head to the side and you're going to have the rush of adrenaline and fight or flight. And you just breathe. Like you just let the person wait. You let them wait. And the nice guy within us does not think that we can let the other person wait. But sure. That's completely not true. Same thing in relationship or same thing with your child. I, I started doing this about four years ago with my son, my teenager. I'd say, thank you for asking. Let me think about it for a minute. And at first, like, are you going to talk? Are you going to talk? You know, like, let me think about it. And I, I made him fucking stand there for like 60 seconds. And it took him like two months to learn, okay, dad is going to stand there quiet for like 30 seconds or 60 seconds. And then he's going to answer. Right. And when he rushed me, my son, not your wife, but when he rushed me, I'd say, you know, if you rush me, I'm just going to say no. So right. give me a minute. That was a teenager thing. But with your woman, you just be like, give me a minute. I want you to answer right now. I don't know your wife. I want you to answer. Why yeah. don't you talk? Like, it's like, yeah. whoa. You know, I would say like, whoa, give me, give me a minute. And yeah. I would just stand it's there. I wouldn't having those boundaries. Thing, the yeah. problem with leaving the room and if there's abuse happening, get the fuck out of there, leave the room. But if there's yeah. no abuse happening and you leave the room, usually, right, guys, it escalates. She feels abandoned. She feels like you can't handle me. You're a fucking. Bleh. So I just say, you know, raise your hand for a second if you, or just like give me a minute about it and look to the side and give yourself sixty seconds. Seriously, try that like five times, and then give it twenty four hours if need be after you talk again. You know, like try that like five times, five different times. Hey, give me a minute breathe you're not gonna be able to think for like 30 seconds breathe yeah okay and then come back to what you want to say try that for two weeks and talk with us about how that yeah. goes yeah for sure yeah awesome but fantastic questions man